Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. You know, the thing that's amazing about, you know, what we get to do every day is you never know what you're gonna get into, right? Whether it's animals, production, you know, you never, every day is a completely different day. And I hope the start of your day is amazing. I just know that every morning I get in here, I know I've gotta buckle up because you never know what you're gonna find. So let's just jump into it and have a great day together. Guess what time it is? It's Colubra time. And by the way, I'm gonna put a little challenge out there for you guys. Uh, for any creative people, I really need a Blue's Clues type of a intro for colubrid eggs. So if you guys can do that, uh, go ahead, hit me up and make a Blue's Clues colubrid egg time because uh, it's a great time of the day. I absolutely love it. This is actually a het scaleless corn snake right here. We're gonna just set her down right now. And she's actually bred to this beautiful animal here, which is a motley scaleless corn snake. Ooh, dog, I tell you what, that is a pretty snake. So there should be some really cool babies. Let's see what kind of egg she has in here. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful clutch right there. Really the perfect clutch. Oh my God, mama, you did so good. Way to go, girl, look at you, wow. Just gonna get her out of there again, just like I always say, we clean them up, we get them fresh water, get them all set up, and hopefully with corn snakes, usually they go on to food in about seven to 10 days. With king snakes, they typically go on to food right away, so we'll get mama back up here. There we go, mom, way to go, and let's take a close look at this clutch, because like I said, this is a beautiful clutch of eggs. Here we go, we'll just kind of pull these out. Look at all stuck together, pearly whites, beautiful. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 good eggs. Good way to start the day. Next one's actually the same thing. It's actually a het scaleless corn, but look, it looks like she's not quite ready. Oh no, it looks like another binding right there. Let's just go ahead and take her out. I tell you what, it looks like she's done laying. And again, this is the second time we've had a female bind up on some eggs, but uh, we're gonna see what we can do here because I think that it's close to that vent where I think I can actually express out this egg really quick. So first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of take her out, just take a look at her. See how the egg is still a little bit far away from the vent? Not sure what I'm gonna do here. Give me a second, I'm gonna set her aside, get these eggs all set up, and then I can come back and see if we can't actually get that egg out of that female. Because it's close enough to the vent where I might be able to go into a probe and actually massage aspirate it out like I've done in the past. Not sure about that. And basically what you have when you have an egg binding like that, it can be a number of things. The overduct can twist, it can fold. Sometimes they just run out of energy and they just can't push it out. The problem is if you leave it in there too long, it can actually dry out and kind of adhere to the overduct and then it becomes a problem and you have to have surgery and stuff like that. So let's work on that girl in a second. In the meantime, we'll just get these eggs set up right here. Let's see, looks like she's got a beautiful clutch of eggs too. So we'll just go ahead, push these in here right here. Got two, four, six, eight, nine good eggs and it looks like she has one egg in her. So not a bad clutch, but uh, let's go ahead, take a look at this girl, see what we can do. And like I mentioned, you know, egg binding is relatively common in colubrids. I'd say probably one out of every maybe 50 to 100 females that lays does actually keep an egg in her, sometimes multiple eggs. Oftentimes you can get them out or they'll push them out on their own. If you can get them out quicker, it's always better. But you can see right here where this is the vent here. There's probably eight or 10 ventral scales between that and the eggs. So what I'm gonna do is just really gently massage, but then I'm gonna go in with a probe on this side here into the vent itself and see if I can't feel for that egg because I don't want the overduct to actually start bending and twisting. I want it to actually kind of find the egg. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of search around a little bit, see if somehow there's a way I can find it. There's a chance that I might not be able to find this egg. I'm just gonna gently kind of push towards and see if I can't find it. And oftentimes you can actually feel, an egg feels a little different than the skin and you can get it around it. So let's see what happens. And there the egg is right there. Looks like we're gonna be able to get this egg out, no problem which is good. And one of the things that's interesting about this is the fact that she just laid this clutch and we were able to get this egg out of her. Not only did it potentially save her life, but also there's a chance this egg is okay. Now there's not a good chance for it because usually once they bind up, eggs always go bad, but there's always a chance because it's a relatively fresh clutch of eggs that was laid. So let's go ahead and get this egg in the incubator, get mama back in there and it's good to hear that uh, she should be okay and she should rebound no problem now. So that's pretty awesome. Moving on, I want to definitely 
stress the fact that if you are breeding steaks, especially in the very beginning, and that happens to you, please see a vet because you know, I've been doing this for so long and the first probably 20, 30 times I had a snake like that, I actually had a vet help me get that egg out. So I kind of learned from vets how to do it. You can definitely damage a snake. This, by the way, is an Abbott's Oka tea that's het for scaleless, bred to a beautiful Abbott's Oka tea corn that I'll show you here in a second. But the point is, is that, you know, after 20, 30 times of seeing a vet do it and actually existing, I was able to find it. I don't want you to go and stick a probe in there where you can rip an ovidoct or actually kill the snake. So again, it's through experience, but again, I want to share everything with you. Regardless, let's pull this clutch and then I'll show you the male that was bred to it. Looks like we got one little slugger in here, but this is two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 good eggs. I tell you, that is amazing. And this male is beautiful. Just take a look at him right there. Oh my gosh, that thing is just a ripper for sure. Again, that's an Abbott's Okatee scaleless corn snake. And half this clutch right here should come out Abbott's Okatee scaleless. The other half on average would be Abbott's Okatees that are het for scaleless. That's a beauty. I mentioned that I want to try to socialize these green basilisks, but uh, I don't know how it's gonna go because they are definitely pretty skittish now. But uh, I'm gonna just see if I can't maybe take one out and just see if I can get in. Whoa, they are so lightning quick. Oh my gosh. I don't even know how I'm gonna catch one. Whoa, there's, whoa! Whoa, Jesus. Okay, okay, here we go. All right, so far so good. This is what I want to do is I want to just let them get on me for a little bit and then I'll put them right back. So that, again, that kind of positive thread of, okay, this wasn't that bad. Cause right now he's jumping on my arm thinking maybe it's a branch and he's probably like, uh oh, I made the wrong decision. But now I need to somehow, whoa. Okay, 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 okay. Now I'm going to try to get him back without him freaking out too much. There he goes. And that's it guys. I mean, that's uh, that's training session number one down. Not sure if it was a success, but it was uh, it was something. So we'll just keep on working on it. And in time, they'll actually start to get used to that. It won't get quite as crazy, but uh, I I'm leaving it there. No more. Got some from Amazon. Not sure if it's something I ordered or if it's something someone sent me. So let's just go ahead and take a look. Oh, but what, what is it? Int oh my gosh, sphagnum moss. That is awesome. Oh my, of course we use sphagnum moss for the nest boxes. And I had mentioned that we we're having a hard time finding it. Uh, so you guys hooked me up. I don't know who this is from. There's no note, but whoever sent sphagnum moss, thank you so much. That is absolutely awesome. Lori, let's remember, come on. Hey Lori, guess what? <laughs> Sadly, we don't have any ball python clutches today. You know, after getting clutches every day for a while, you start to be like, you think you're gonna have them every single day, but the truth is you're gonna have lulls in the season. That's just the way it is. Like I've been mentioning here in the next few days, it's gonna start to explode down here. It's gonna be amazing, but we do still have to check the spotted and children's pythons. And guess what? That's right. We at least have some python egg state. Look at that girl. Of course, this is a spotted python or a maculosa, and it looks like she's got a beautiful clutch of eggs. Interestingly enough, last year, this girl slugged out, didn't even have one good egg because I always have loved this girl. It's one of my oldest spotted pythons. I've actually had this girl for probably, I don't know, 13, 14 years, something like that. And she used to always produce, and I'll be honest with you, last year when she laid a clutch of slugs, I thought maybe it was just that she was old and she was done producing, but she she proved me wrong. Oop, got a little egg here. We're definitely gonna have to can it because it kind of rolled all over the place. She proved me wrong for sure because this is a gorgeous clutch of eggs. Take a look at that. Who doggy, I tell you what. That is, oh, look at there. There's one little slugger in here way over in the back that we'll just go ahead and peel off. See if we can't get this off without breaking any other eggs. Don't want to rupture any other eggs by doing so. So I have to be very, very gentle. Spin it, get it out of there. So one little slugger, but she got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15 eggs. Again, we'll candle those last two, but 15 eggs, that is awesome, especially because I wasn't expecting a good clutch at all. And speaking of slugs, this was a disappointment right here. This was actually a granite spotted python. It's a recessive mutation that causes this cool graniteness, but look at this. 
Those don't look like good eggs at all. That's 100% slug nastiness right there. Looks like she might have a couple more in her, so I'm gonna leave her alone for a little bit. But that's it, guys. I mean, that pretty much culminates what a snake breeder is about. You have beautiful high clutches that you didn't expect, and sometimes you have clutches like this girl that laid a good clutch last year, lay slugs. It's just the way the breeding season goes. You have ups and downs. Hopefully there's more ups than downs, but hey, I'm still loving it. We're still killing it this year with production. So I'll let this girl go and we'll move on. What is up everybody? We always go over what our animals are eating, but also when they poop it out. So, I mean, hey girl, hi baby. So she's hanging out here, but I wanted to show you guys this right here. So this right here is what is left of, um, well, poop, pooped out egg. Even animals at home, I go through their poop and make sure they're fully digesting. I wanna make sure their poops are solid and not like watery and things like that. Cause like anything like bacterial infections often really show in, in, in how they're digesting their food. Speaking of good digestion, another another great thing is that, you know, like her here, she's very thirsty. So she's sitting here drinking some water for us. But this is also a good indication of her behavior because obviously she's not, she's not afraid of me being here. She trusts me so much that she'll actually be willing to drink water while well, I sit here and ramble on about her. It's always always good to know what's going in and what's coming out of your animals so you know what's essentially, you know, how the, all the pipes are working. Make sure everything's kind of squeaky clean down there. And when something's not, you want to address it quickly and, and do the right thing for your animal. Make sure they're happy and really, really, really thriving. This is actually really bizarre. Of course, Nova is up here just chilling out. Hi, baby. What are you doing, Nova? And his girl up there, and she is definitely swollen up for her next clutch eggs. Uh, this time, we're gonna absolutely make sure we have a good nest box in there, and we won't miss this clutch. I can guarantee you that. But what's interesting is that when Nova's breeding her, he stays all the time up in the tree. And then as soon as basically she's gravid, she's done, he's not breeding her anymore, he comes down and wants to hang out. And he stays right up at the front just like this, just hanging out wanting to get pets. It's so bizarre. Again, he always is up in the tree when he's breeding. And then now that it's over, he'll hang out up front. This, this animal is so cool. And again, continuing to kind of learn the behavior of animals is just so interesting to me. As Jessica's continuing to collect leopard gecko eggs, we've got some more little baby Chinese geckos. Now, is this the more common ones or which yeah, ones? these are the more common ones. Okay, gotcha. They're cute little guys. I know, it's always cute to see these guys. I mean, Chinese cave geckos are absolutely adorable. Won't be long before we're hatching leopard geckos. Uh, yeah, only a couple months. <laughs> it happens pretty quick, so I'll let uh, Jessica get back to it, but I have to show off the little babies every time they hatch. So when I was at the store the other day, I saw they had corn, so I had to get it because Matilda loves it. So while they already got their greens, I'm gonna see if she wants this little treat. Hey, girl. That. Oh yes, I'm gonna say yes that she does. She's like, hell oh, yeah, give me all the corn. <laughs> Squirts everywhere. <laughs> Such a messy eater, and you're so strong. <laughs> Just like my kids when they were little, eating corn on the cob. Just all everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I love the leg. Dribble it down her chin. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> little workout for her too. <laughs> Pretty excited and a little nervous about this clutch. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is actually an Arizona mountain king snake or what they would call a pyro. And it's actually head for albino. It's bred to an albino. They're amazing. It could be fertile. It could not be. Ah, yes. Fertile. It seems like every year we have one year that there's a lot of fertility. The next year it seems like we hardly produce anything. So that is a great sign that our first clutch was actually fertile. We did have one little egg over here that doesn't look good. Might be okay. I might set it up in the egg box nevertheless just to see what's going on. But the rest of them look amazing. So we'll go ahead and set these up right over here. Again, I'll probably put this egg in here just as a possibility, but most likely it's not. Two, four, five good eggs, one so-so egg. And again, these are half for albino. Albino. The albinos are ridiculous. As a matter of fact, let me show you the male real quick. And here is the male albino right here. Of course, we actually bought the very first albino Arizona Mountain Kings that were ever produced. It was a guy in Missouri that actually had a pair that he had just picked up from a pet shop, bred them together and produced albinos. And ever since we've been producing them as well as hypos and other things. So they're absolutely incredible and a great way to start the year with a fertile clutch. Last Colubrid clutch is actually an aneurythristic Texas rat snake. Now, interestingly enough, I'm gonna pull this 
this girl down really quick. These aneurithristics right here popped up in our collection out of nowhere. We were the first ones to have aneurithristics, which is just basically lacking the red pigment. Uh, don't know where it came from. We were just breeding Texas rats together. They popped out. Ultimately, that's how we produce the snows, which are the albino aneurithristics as well. Ooh, mama, don't get upset. It's okay. Just gonna get this girl off real quick. And she was actually bred to a snow male. I can see some bad eggs in here right off the rip, and oh, that's a disaster clutch. Oh my gosh, that's not good. Yeah, interestingly enough, that snow male actually has fathered a couple good clutches this year, but this clutch, disaster. Not even a good egg in it, which is a bummer because I actually love the Annery Texas rats and the chances were we'd have half snows and half Annery's from this clutch. No idea what happened with that one. It happened, but oh well, that's the way it goes. And that's the way we end our colubrid egg collecting for the day. I always love being able to help a female that is egg bound get un-egg bound so that she doesn't die. As a matter of fact, one of my most popular videos I've ever done was actually an egg bound snake video. As a matter of fact, if you wanna see my most popular videos, here's a playlist right over here. Also, if you don't mind, can you support my podcast channel by subscribing? You can hit that right over here. Subscribe to this channel on this side. Please turn those post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. And remember, be kind to someone. I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.